to a goodwill that will enhance security in Europe. One of General Galvin's concerns had been the vast quantities of Soviet armament that lay east of the Ural Mountains. Concerned about the tanks and the other equipment that's east of the Ural Mountains. It amounts to thousands of pieces of equipment, but I'm not so concerned about it that I would say don't sign the treaty. Let's sign the treaty and then let's work out the problem of what's east of the Urals. And the Soviets have talked to me about it. I just got back from the Soviet <coughs> Union the day before yesterday. And there I talked to uh, the generals about this and told them about my worries. And they uh, gave me some of their reasons. They say they have some management reasons and they uh, have other uh, uh, reasons why that equipment is there. Uh. General Galvin was interviewed while visiting troops loading their equipment at a railhead in Germany. Well, U.S. deployment to Saudi Arabia from Europe went into full swing today at Rotterdam, Holland, one of three North Sea ports, sending U.S. forces equipment to Desert Shield. The ports of Antwerp, Belgium, and Bremerhaven, Germany are also involved in the operation. About 500 American soldiers are working at each port, loading the 60-some vessels required to move equipment to the Persian Gulf region. Well, soldiers throughout the European Command are working overtime at over a dozen railhead sites in Germany. They're transporting M1A1 tanks to various ports for shipment to the Gulf region. Specialist Glenn Wolf has more. Platoon sergeants, first sergeants, and company commanders told their soldiers for the next several weeks, expect long, hard hours. Loading Desert Shield-bound ships takes lots of time and hard work. Currently, three ships wait in Bremerhaven's harbor, and officials say more ships are on the way, all ready to carry tons of Abrams M1A1 tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles, helicopters, and other support equipment. These tanks are from Kitsigan and will support the 3rd Infantry Division's Desert Shield mission. Uh, we're uh, railheading the tanks, getting them ready to uh, put on the boat to go to Saudi Arabia, and it's, uh, it's been a long process. Uh, we're hoping to have it done, have our company tanks done anyway by this evening. But we're not sure. They may have us do the entire squadron's tanks, so we may be here for a while. From track blocks and tie-downs to ground guides, safety is on every mind, whether working long hours or not. After offloading, the tanks are moved to a holding area, like this one, where they wait for ships to become available. The whole operation is running 24 hours a day, with some soldiers working long hours, sometimes more than 12 hours a day. Offloading the railhead, loading the holding area, and packing them on board a ship so they can do it all over again. From Bremerhaven, Specialist Glenn Wolf, AFN News. Specialist Jim Higgins is in Saudi Arabia with the 8th Infantry Division. He files a report on soldiers training with a German vehicle designed for maneuvering in a chemical environment. The last time we showed you the 8th ID training on the Fuchs was their initial training at Sandhofen, Germany. Since then, they've proven their mettle, and now they're ready to deploy to Operation Desert Shield. The 8th ID's 25th chemical has put together a super chemical platoon consisting of elements from companies in Mainz, Mannheim, and Bad Kreuznach. The platoon was assembled especially for the Fuchs with decontamination and chemical operations specialists all coming together to train on a common goal. The Fuchs is one of the most highly advanced recon vehicles of its kind. And these 8th ID soldiers feel they've come of age learning how to operate it. We move from the uh, dark ages to the computer age overnight. When you move from a, a track vehicle that's not really made to do a true NBC reconnaissance mission to something like this that's ideally suited for it, it it's superb. These soldiers have uh, moved from, from being decon soldiers, NBC NCOs, and some guys that used to work on uh, M113 recon vehicles, all coming together with a Fox platoon, an incredible, versatile, high-tech piece of equipment. Training on the Fuchs consisted of a three-week intensive course with the Bundeswehr and covered all aspects of the vehicle from computers to actually driving the vehicle in different environments. How do these babies handle on the Autobahn? Uh, they're very quick, smooth, quiet. Uh, I had to say it drives like a Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing left to do at this point is actually deploy and put the vehicles through its real-world mission. Training these soldiers know inside and out and they're ready to do. We came together, you know, on short notice, and when we got together, we, we finally clicked into one whole platoon, you know, because they're from Bad Cruz Notch and we're from Mannheim, and to put us together, we thought it was going to be difficult, but it worked out well. These six additional Fuchs reconnaissance vehicles are once again strengthening the overall effectiveness of forces in the Gulf at Operation Desert Shield. Specialist Jim Higgins, AFN News.
Specialist Higgins should be back in Frankfurt before Thanksgiving. Next week, he'll have a series of reports on use of soldiers in Saudi Arabia. We'll get the story on troop motivation, morale, and we'll find out how troops really feel about the food the Army is serving them. A 5th Corps MP battalion is deploying to the Gulf. Judith Williams reports the process of deployment involves meticulous preparation and a lot of paperwork. Paperwork, a necessary evil for troops deploying to Operation Desert Shield. The 93rd Military Police Battalion made it easy for their soldiers with a one-stop operations center set up to fill all needs. We have a total of 12 stations that are set up here this afternoon, and we have soldiers going through. Uh, we have representatives from the uh, AG office that are processing uh, paperwork to ensure that all of the soldiers' emergency data is up to date. And uh, we also have JAG that is represented out here today, preparing power of attorneys and wills for soldiers on the spot. We have the medical section that's here to provide the soldiers Goomer Goblin shots and our various shots and updating the shot records for our soldiers. Getting soldiers physically and mentally ready to go includes assuring that families are taken care of during periods of separation. We've been separated before, my wife and I, for six months before, and she dealt with it there. But of course, it would be a little bit harder me being over in a hostile situation like that. There is a family support that the unit has set up, and there will be always somebody 24 hours a day that all family members can get a hold of for anything and everything possible. She's not looking forward to me if I am sent over there, but if I go, she can deal with it. This is Judith Williams, 5th Corps Public Affairs Office with TV5 for AFN News. As the military buildup continues in the Gulf region, the American Red Cross is expanding its operation in the desert. The vice president of the American Red Cross, James Halatacek, is on his way to Saudi Arabia. He talked with AFN today about the mission of the Red Cross in the Gulf. Uh, our congressional charter uh, requires that we provide a medium of communication between the man or woman in the service and the family back home. And uh, we are therefore placing people in Saudi Arabia to, to complement the buildup in the troop strength. Uh, my purpose in visiting is to make absolutely certain that we're fulfilling our mission appropriately. Uh, currently, uh, we have some 40 Red Cross personnel in Saudi Arabia attached to different uh, military commands. Uh, we have 14 more in the pipeline, and by the March 1st, we anticipate having 160 totally to meet the kinds of troop strength that are being set up and set in motion right now. Uh, my concern is that, uh, indeed, uh, we have them in place, that they're appropriately briefed, and that I have some good understanding as to what uh, they're encountering, what the problems are, so that if there are any, we can overcome them and make sure that we meet our commitment to the military. We'll have more on the Red Cross operation in Desert Shield tomorrow night. We'll also take a look at what the Red Cross provides for military families left behind in Europe. Well, it looks like this rainy weather is going to stick around for a while. Sergeant Rob Rios has our forecast. Well, it looks like some of this rain that's moved in over Central Europe will hang around over the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. You can see how things look this afternoon as viewed from the weather satellite, and we continue to see a good influx of moisture into the region, helping to feed the shower activity. It's been fairly persistent the last few days. Sunshine largely confined to the southern part of Europe, and even a little break in the action over the UK today. Let's put today's surface map up, and we can see how the systems look this afternoon. And this is the front that we mentioned yesterday, a little further west. It has progressed uh, slightly eastward, although continues to generate a good deal of weather throughout the country. Uh, light snow in the far north up in Oslo, Stockholm, uh, Helsinki today. Otherwise, rain basically just on and off uh, throughout uh, Germany. Back towards the Benelux, again, a little sunshine breaking out over the southern part of the UK. And you can see cloudy skies and rain over the northern uh, part of Great Britain this afternoon. In fact, tonight, as that front continues pushing eastward, we may see some late night thunderstorms come out of it. Looking at the numbers, though, 42 the high in London today, 47 in Paris, 49 here in Frankfurt, 56 down in Venice, 45 in Vienna, and uh, 63 in our 
currently sunny skies. Rome checking at 63 at 3 p.m. Let's take a look at the numbers here in uh, Germany, and you can see 56 was a high down in Munich. They broke out uh, late this afternoon. Uh, sunshine broke out and temperatures warmed up a bit. 49 again here in Frankfurt and Nuremberg. And with rain on and off today, Berlin checked in at 44 degrees. On to tomorrow's map, we can see what we're expecting. And overall, there's really not much change in the pattern, so not much change in the forecast either. Rain, or rather snow, returns to the far north. Once again, rain on and off uh, throughout Central Europe. Showers becoming especially active over the central and southern parts of uh, Germany. Back towards Great Britain, kind of a mixture of weather. Once again, cloudy skies, rain threatening the northern part, partly sunny skies in store for the southern part of the country. And again, another relatively cool day in store for tomorrow with daytime highs only in the mid to upper 40s. So then let's recap this and take one more look at tomorrow's forecast. And cloudy skies and rain returns to Central Europe. Variable clouds in store for the UK. Lows tonight will fall into the upper 30s and lower 40s with highs tomorrow in the mid to upper 40s. That's my forecast. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks, Rob. Several food items normally stocked in European commissaries will soon disappear from store shelves. The U.S. government has suspended contracts with Pet Incorporated. The brands affected by the cancellation are Old El Paso, Underwood, Pet, Accent, B&M, Progresso, Hollywood, Sego, Pet Ritz, Downey Flake, Whitman's, and La Creme. Army commissaries have been given a list of substitute products sold under other brand names. Those products will be stocked instead of pet products until the contract issue is resolved. The action against pet was taken as a result of criminal proceedings against the company. The charges stem from a continuing prosecution of the dairy industry in Florida. In financial news, the U.S. dollar gained a fenning against the mark today. There will be no trade in Germany tomorrow because of a holiday. That also means your community bank will be closed. So military exchange rates are good through Thursday. Let's take a look. I can't think of a better way to get to know what the real Germany is like. Now, very few tourists get to know Germans the way I have. An Air Force squadron is leaving Europe, but not for the Gulf. The unit is deactivating as part of the drawdown of forces in Europe. Sergeant Sharon Goodman reports. The 10th Military Airlift Squadron from Swybrooken Air Base is the first flying unit to inactivate since the Berlin Wall came down. The inactivation is in accordance with the drawdown of forces in Europe and the closure of Swybrooken Air Base. The 10th Mass has been at Swybrooken since January 1984. It's been an interesting uh, squadron. It's been the best squadron I've ever had the pleasure of being assigned to at this time. I hope that my next assignment will be just as good or better, uh, which I kind of doubt because uh, I tell you, our motto, uh, with a touch of class and judgment, discretion, we've really lived that in the squadron. I'm pretty proud of the squadron, and uh, I'm sure everybody else here is also. Before being inactivated, the unit was awarded the Outstanding Operations Support Airlift Squadron of the Year Award. Three of the nine C-23 Sherpas that belong to the unit have already departed. The remaining six are scheduled to leave sometime this month. Although the ceremony was held early so all members could participate, the unit officially inactivates March 31st. 1991. Sergeant Sharon Goodman, AFN News. As 7th Corps soldiers leave Europe to support Operation Desert Shield, the wives they leave behind won't be sitting around feeling sorry for themselves. Gail McCabe reports many are making plans to keep busy by volunteering. One another, and that's what I want to tell you. Um, the soldiers are going to be counting on you, and you all can be counting on me. What we have to do is go out. They're laying their battle plan. They are the spouses of the command and staff of Headquarters 7th Corps. If we we're going to be strong and support uh, and help with the uh, 
the young families and uh, the people that are staying here after the deployment, and that can only make our soldiers better. The information these spouses and others like them are putting out includes all the practical stuff families will need when their soldier deploys. What they're also getting across is the knowledge that they care. Darlene Gehring's husband has been through two tours in Vietnam and a year in Saudi. She's received the news that both of her sons and her husband are going to the Gulf. I'm staying busy, staying, getting out of the house, volunteer work, and just not really trying to think about it. It's not going to be difficult for, for the ladies that, or the spouses that are here at Kelly Barracks, but I, I feel like it is going to be difficult for those that are out on the economy, the ones that, there are going to be many that, that just, uh, at this point in time, they don't feel they need that communication. And, and my concern right now are for those out on the economy. All spouses are answering the call to duty and taking their responsibilities seriously. As one spouse puts it, it's up to us to keep it together. In Stuttgart, Gail McCabe, 7th Corps, AFN News. American school children in Berlin are sharing the spirit of Thanksgiving with some of their German neighbors. The kids of Thomas Roberts Elementary pooled resources in the school kitchen to cook up a Thanksgiving lunch for some special friends. Six of the second grade classes at TAR and 30 students from a handicapped school in Spandau and a school in Neukölln gathered in the TAR gymnasium for the lunch. Getting the kids calm was the first task, and after that was finished, it was time to eat. The meal consisted of beef soup, rolls, pumpkin and potato pies, and juice. And the kids from TAR got involved in the project, cooking the soup and the pies at the school with a little help from the teachers. The lunch was more than just a chance to bring Americans and Germans together. I think it will be something they will long remember because they actually had a chance to participate in everything. They did the cooking, and I really need to stop and thank the parents, too, because the parents were wonderful. We have a lot of participation, and without their help and the children, I feel as though, oh, we would have really had a difficult time. It went well because of the children at TAR, the staff here, and the parents. After the meal was over, each group of kids sang the other a song before everyone filed out. It may not have been a real Thanksgiving meal, but the memories will live on for a long time. Just the smiles and the children, we did an art project together. Oh, they were so open, so friendly, loving. It was wonderful. And when we did the song for them, they also brought a song from their school to do for us. It was super. It's just that friendship, that kindness that was shown today. It was great. From Berlin, Emma Maghetto. AFN News. And that's our report. Thanks for joining us. Good night.